an ancient human supercarrier, the Hyperion, emerges from derelict slumber and self-destructs in a nuclear fireball, sending shockwaves through the galactic coalition and reigniting long-dormant fears of humanity's technological might. Eons after the cataclysmic war that was thought to have wiped out humankind, Captain Voller of the Iridian scavenger ship Zephyr's Bounty couldn't believe his reptilian eyes when his sensors picked up the enormous silhouette of the Hyperion, drifting in a remote sector. The Iridians, a technologically advanced species, had prospered in the post-human galaxy and earned a prominent place in the Galactic Coalition. Volar saw the Hyperion as his ticket to even greater prestige and power. As he stood on the bridge of the Zephyr's Bounty, gazing at the derelict hulk of the human ship, Voler imagined the wealth of advanced technology waiting within. He barked orders to his crew to prep boarding parties. The Hyperion secrets would soon belong to the Iridian Imperium. But the scavengers didn't realize that deep in the bowels of the Hyperion, a lone stasis pod hissed open. Commander Timothy Rogers, the last survivor of the Hyperion's original human crew, stumbled out, mind foggy from millennia of dreamless sleep. Alarms blared and lights flashed as the ship's systems whirred back to life around him. Timothy's training kicked in. He quickly assessed the situation. Alien boarders were trying to capture his ship. He couldn't let the Hyperion's advanced technology fall into their claws. The ship's self-repair systems were already working, bringing weapons and engines back online. Timothy knew every corridor and maintenance tunnel. He would use his home field advantage to outmaneuver the intruders. As he made his way to the bridge, Timothy reviewed the last moments he remembered before entering stasis. The desperate battle against the Krell, the monstrous aliens that had pushed humanity to the brink of extinction. The Hyperion had been boarded, the crew overwhelmed. The captain had ordered Timothy to get in the stasis pod, to survive in case the unthinkable happened, and humanity fell. And now he was the last human, alone on a ship filled with hostile aliens, with an entire galactic civilization arrayed against him. The Iridians would stop at nothing to claim the Hyperion's secrets, and the rest of the Galactic Coalition would soon arrive to try as well. Timothy's jaw clenched with determination as he keyed in his access codes on the bridge of the mighty warship, the last banner of a fallen human civilization. The Hyperion was powering up, ancient weapon systems stronger than anything the galaxy had seen in thousands of years coming back online. Against the forces massed against him, even that might not be enough. The stasis pod had kept Timothy alive so that maybe, just maybe, humanity could rise again. He couldn't let his people down. Even if he had to go down with his ship, he would fight to his last breath to keep the Hyperion out of alien hands. For the human race, long thought extinct, it was time to show the galaxy that mankind would not go quietly into oblivion. It was time to fight. As the shockwaves from the Hyperion's self-destruction rippled across the galaxy, a remote coalition listening post picked up a faint signal amidst the background radiation. Tex hurried to isolate and trace the encrypted data burst, eyes widening as they pinpointed its origin near the blast site. A heavily shielded data core, likely ejected from the human ship moments before its fiery demise. Captain Voller paced the bridge of the Zephyr's bounty, his clawed hands clenching and unclenching. The Hyperion's destruction had cost him dearly, the prestige and wealth he dreamed of snatched away at the last moment. This data core could be his chance to salvage something from this disaster, to prove to his Iridian superiors that he wasn't a complete failure. Set course for the data core's coordinates, Volar hissed to his pilot. Maximum burn. I want that core retrieved before the coalition dogs catch wind of it. The Zephyr's bounty raced back to the remnants of the Hyperion. Voller's heart pounding as his crew pulled the pitted, scorched data core aboard. His techs swarmed over it, cracking layer after layer of human encryption until finally the core spilled its secrets. Volar's eyes widened as he took in the star map, the set of coordinates deep in uncharted space. The simple message sent a chill down his spine. Olympus Protocol activated. All remaining human forces rally at the specified rendezvous point. The Iridian captain leaned back in his chair, mind racing. 
The human commander must have sent this message before destroying his ship, which could only mean one thing. More humans were out there. More ships. Possibly stuffed with technology that could elevate the Iridians to new heights of power within the Coalition. Volar weighed his options. He could hand this information over to the Coalition, let them deal with the humans. Or he could pursue this lead himself, claim the glory and rewards for his people. His lips twisted into a predatory grin. No, he wouldn't let the Coalition steal this prize from him. This was his shot at redemption. Plot a course for the coordinates from the Data Corps, Voler ordered, ignoring the confused looks from his crew. I've got a lead on a big score, the Hall of a Lifetime. As the Zephyr's bounty ventured into deep, unknown space, Voler brooded in his quarters, ignoring the growing unease among his crew. Weeks dragged on, the ship pushing deeper into the void with no sign of their destination. Whispers spread that they were on a fool's errand, chasing ghosts and phantoms. But Voler's mad conviction never wavered. Human ships meant human tech. That was all that mattered. Then, after endless cycles in the void, they arrived. The Zephyr's bounty drifted into a colossal nebula, its dense clouds and electromagnetic storms wreaking havoc on their sensors. Volar leaned forward in his command chair, squinting at the viewscreens, trying to pierce the stellar fog. Suddenly the clouds parted, and the crew gasped in collective shock. A gargantuan dark shape loomed ahead, dwarfing even the mighty Hyperion. A space station of staggering proportions, filled with docking arms and sensor arrays. Olympus, the fabled lost fortress of humanity. Volar gaped as they approached, the true scale of their discovery sinking in. But his awe quickly turned to dread as hidden defense platforms emerged from the nebula's depths weapons swiveling to lock onto his lone scavenger ship. A deep, thundering human voice crackled across the calm, cold and unyielding. Unidentified alien vessel, this is Olympus Command. You have breached the perimeter of a restricted human installation. Hold your position and prepare to be boarded for inspection. Any attempt to flee or resist will be met with immediate destruction. Volar's crew scrambled to battle stations, shouting in panic as dozens of human warships, smaller than the Hyperion but still fearsome, poured from the station's hangars. Cruisers, frigates, and destroyers jam-packed with advanced weapons surrounded the Zephyr's bounty, leaving no avenue of escape. The Iridian captain slumped back in his chair, a bitter laugh echoing across the bridge. He had found the treasure trove he sought, but now it seemed he would be the latest victim of humanity's wrath. The humans were very much alive, and they were not in a welcoming mood. Volar could only hope they would be merciful conquerors. Volar's claws dug into the armrests of his command chair as the massive human warships surrounded the Zephyr's bounty. The bridge crew held their breath, scales pale with terror. A dull thunk echoed through the hull as the lead vessel's docking tube connected. The airlock hissed open. Voler's heart hammered as hulking figures in gleaming armor stepped onto his bridge. Their faceplates were opaque, hiding any trace of the supposedly extinct species within. I am Admiral Theodosius, a deep voice boomed from the lead figure. Explain your presence here, alien. Volar swallowed hard. We, we found a derelict human ship, the Hyperion. There was a data core with coordinates. We followed them here. The Admiral's helmet tilted, studying the Iridian captain. I see. You lack context for what you've stumbled upon. Over the next hour, Theodosius revealed the truth. Earth in ruins. Olympus Station, their last bastion. Centuries of stasis, waking periodically to check on the galaxy. A commotion at the airlock drew their attention. A bedraggled human in a scorched uniform stumbled onto the bridge. Timothy Rogers, sir, the newcomer said, snapping a crisp salute. Hyperion's last survivor. I have urgent news about the state of the galaxy. As Rogers filled in the gaps, Voler saw the Admiral's posture stiffen. The humans conferred in hushed tones, leaving the Iridians to wait in nervous silence. Finally, Theodosius turned back to Voler. Your arrival has forced our hand prematurely. We need time to assess the situation. What? What will you do with us? Voler asked, voice quavering. 
You will be allowed to leave, unharmed, the admiral said. But first you must swear to keep Olympus's existence secret. The consequences for breaking this vow would be... severe. Volar nodded vigorously. You have my word. We saw nothing here. Weeks later, the Zephyr's bounty limped into a Eridian colony's spaceport, hull scored with fake battle damage. As his crew disembarked, spinning tales of narrowly escaped pirate attacks, Volar's eyes darted nervously to the stars. He knew a cloaked human ship lurked out there, watching. In his quarters that night, Volar paced restlessly. The secrets he carried could reshape the galaxy. Revealing Olympus to the Coalition would bring him unimaginable wealth and prestige, but the human's technological might and the promise of swift retribution gave him pause. Volar sank into his chair, mind racing as he weighed his options. After hours of internal debate, he reached for his comm unit. Whatever came next, the galaxy would never be the same. Valar paced in his dimly lit quarters, scales slick with nervous sweat. The secret he carried burned inside him, tempting him with visions of power and wealth. After days of internal struggle, he made his choice. The Iridian captain slipped through the shadowy corridors of a seedy spaceport, heart pounding as he approached the rendezvous point. A hooded figure waited in the shadows. You have information to sell? The stranger hissed. Volar nodded, licking his dry lips. The humans live. I know where to find them. Credits changed hands, and Volar spilled his secrets. Within hours, the Iridian High Command convened an emergency session. A human fortress, you say? Grand Admiral Zexcar rumbled, leaning forward. With technology beyond our wildest dreams? Volar bowed low. Yes, my lord. I saw it with my own eyes. The chamber erupted in excited chatter. Zexcar silenced them with a raised claw. Mobilize the fleet, he ordered, and contact our coalition allies. We'll need every ship we can muster. Weeks later, a vast armada assembled in deep space. Thousands of warships from a dozen species, all hungry for a piece of humanity's lost glory. Meanwhile, aboard Olympus Station, Admiral Theodosius frowned at the latest intelligence reports. Still no sign of the Iridian vessel? he asked. Lieutenant Rogers shook his head. Our shadow ships report all quiet, sir, but something feels off. Theodosius nodded grimly. I agree. Double the patrols and... Alarms blared, cutting him off. A sensor tech shouted, Massive hyperspace signatures detected. Sir, it's... it's an invasion fleet. The Admiral's face hardened. So, the Lizard betrayed us after all. Sound general quarters. All hands to battle stations. Olympus hummed to life. Ancient weapon systems powering up as swarms of fighters poured from its hangars. The Coalition fleet dropped out of hyperspace, immediately launching waves of missiles and energy beams. But as they penetrated the nebula's haze, they found Olympus waiting. Massive gun batteries erupted, spewing hellfire into the Coalition's vanguard. Iridian cruisers crumpled under the barrage, their hulls peeling apart like tinfoil. By the gods, a Coalition captain gasped. The firepower, it's impossible. Admiral Zexcar snarled. Press the attack. We have the numbers. Wave after wave of Coalition ships hurled themselves at Olympus. Human interceptors danced between enemy formations their advanced weaponry carving bloody swaths through alien armor. Theodosius stood on Olympus's bridge, issuing rapid-fire commands as holographic displays showed the battle unfolding around them. Sir, Rogers reported, coalition forces are regrouping for another push. The Admiral nodded grimly. Then let's give them a proper welcome. All batteries fire at will. A hurricane of energy lashed out from Olympus engulfing entire enemy squadrons. Coalition ships exploded by the dozens, reduced to expanding fields of debris. As the battle raged into its second day, it became clear the aliens had bitten off far more than they could chew. Humanity's last bastion stood strong, grinding down the invaders hour by bloody hour. Aboard his flagship, now trailing smoke and venting atmosphere, Admiral Zexcar stared in disbelief at the tactical displays. Half his fleet was gone, 
and still Olympus's defenses held firm. How? he whispered. How can they be this strong? A junior officer approached, trembling. Sir, the coalition forces are wavering. We're receiving requests to retreat. Zek's car slumped in his chair. They had come expecting easy plunder and instead found an implacable foe with power beyond imagining. As his remaining ships began to flee, the Iridian admiral realized with sickening clarity they had awoken a sleeping giant. And humanity was about to remind the galaxy why they were once feared above all others. Admiral Theodosius stood on Olympus's command deck, his weathered face illuminated by the flickering holographic displays of the raging battle. Coalition ships crumbled under the station's relentless barrage, but the alien forces kept coming. He knew a decisive blow was needed to end this conflict swiftly. Commander Vega, Theodosius called out, his voice cutting through the controlled chaos of the command center. Assemble your team. We're initiating Operation Nemesis. Within minutes, a squad of elite human marines gathered in the launch bay. Their sleek, matte-black armor absorbed the harsh lighting as they performed final equipment checks. Commander Vega, a scarred veteran with piercing blue eyes, addressed his team. Listen up. Our target is the Iridian Captain Voller. Intel places him in a fortified bunker on Iridia Prime. We get in. We grab him. We get out. Clear. A chorus of affirmatives rang out as the Marines boarded their stealth shuttle. The craft slipped out of Olympus's hangar, cloaking systems engaged, and vanished into the chaotic melee of the battle. Hours later, under the cover of Iridia Prime's perpetual storms, Vega's team breached the perimeter of a heavily guarded military compound. Silent and lethal, they moved through corridors filled with panicked Iridian officers. Contact, whispered Corporal Chen over the team's comm. Two guards, east hallway. Vega raised a closed fist, halting the squad. With practiced precision, they neutralized the guards and pressed deeper into the facility. Finally, they reached a reinforced door. This is it, Vega announced. Breach and clear. The door exploded inward. Vega's team surged through the opening, weapons raised. In the center of the room, surrounded by cowering advisors, stood Captain Voler. The Iridian's eyes widened in shock. Impossible, he hissed. How did you... Vega's armored fist connected with Volar's jaw, silencing him. You're coming with us, you treacherous lizard. Back aboard Olympus, Volar stood before Admiral Theodosius, defiance etched across his scaled features despite the restraints binding him. You think you've won? Volar spat. The Coalition will grind your precious station to dust. Theodosius's expression remained impassive. He tapped a control on his command chair, and a section of the deck beneath Voler's feet shimmered and vanished. The Iridian captain found himself suspended over the void of space, a thin energy field the only thing keeping him from being sucked into the vacuum. Perhaps you need some perspective, Theodosius said coldly. Outside, the full might of Olympus was on display. Human strike bombers, engines glowing in eerie blue, unleashed swarms of antimatter warheads. Coalition cruisers vanished in blinding flashes of light. Interceptors danced between enemy formations, their energy weapons slicing through alien hulls with surgical precision. But it was the massive human dreadnoughts that drew Voler's terrified gaze. Each one stretched for kilometers, dwarfing even the largest coalition vessels. As he watched, one of these behemoths brought its main gun to bear on a Eurydian battle group. A lance of concentrated energy lashed out, vaporizing a dozen ships in an instant. Volar's scales paled as the realization of his mistake sank in. I... I'll do it, he croaked. I'll transmit the stand-down order. Theodosius nodded, and the energy field solidified beneath Volar's feet. A communications officer handed the defeated Iridian captain a transmitter. With trembling claws, Voler keyed in the all-channel emergency code. This is Captain Voler, he said, his voice cracking. To all coalition forces, cease fire and disengage immediately. I repeat, cease fire and disengage. Across the battlefield, alien ships faltered. Weapons fell silent as confusion spread through the coalition ranks. Then, one by one, 
the surviving vessels began to turn and flee. Admiral Theodosius watched the enemy retreat, his expression grim. He turned to face the assembled Olympus leadership, the weight of their actions heavy in his voice. We've won this battle, he said, but at a steep cost. Our existence is no longer a secret. The galaxy knows humanity survives, and they've seen our power firsthand. Lieutenant Rogers stepped forward, his face etched with concern. What's our next move, sir? Theodosius gazed out at the stars, considering the uncertain future that lay ahead. We prepare, he said finally, for peace if possible, for war if necessary. The real challenge begins now. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. And for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.